This video is brought to you by Sayrite. Visit Sayrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to reupholster the front seats. These are bucket seats for a 46 Plymouth, a classic car. We'll be disassembling the old seats and using the fabric from them to make new patterns with new fabric and then show you how to sew them up and then we'll reinstall the newly made covers on the foam and frame. Kenny will walk us through all the steps required. Hi, I'm Kenny with Sims Upholstery. Today I'm going to show you how to recover the front seats on a 46 Plymouth using Sailrite materials. Let's get into it. The first step is planning, and that requires marking the old seat for the patterning. Okay, so after you get some pictures of what you're going to uh, disassemble, you're going to want to mark everything. Um, there's a simple way to do this. I usually start from the center out, but you can number them or mark them however you like. So now I'm just going down the seams to make the pieces. This is actually going to be in several different colors, so you want to make sure that you mark everything that uh, you're doing color-wise as you go so that you don't get confused. This seat will have a whitish cream on the sides and a royal blue color in the center. So Kenny marks it blue and WH for white. Okay, so whenever you're doing your covers, you want to make sure wherever you're going to cut it, which is what these black lines represent, that you mark that you're going to have a half inch seam on both of these parts of the cover. This is where the white and the blue panels will be seamed together. The sides of the chair will be separate panels. He's marking those as well. So basically what I'm doing, this is the numbered piece. This is my sixth piece. This is the back of the seat, so that's why I call it the back, and this is the color of the piece. Okay, so this is what the seat is going to look like after you mark it. Basically, you have your number, the fact that it's a seat, and the color. It's going to show your half-inch seams for everything here. Um, then you have the center. This You're going to be actually be putting the channeling in. I didn't use as much channeling as they used, because I think it's easier for you to line up seams instead of trying to line up the actual channel. Um, and that's just your basic layout of what your seat's going to look like. And then same thing at the top. So if you make up a basic list for everything, it's going to be a lot easier for you to uh, find everything. And then I'll show you how to lay it out as you take it apart. Now we're going to remove the old cover in preparation for making new patterns. Okay, so next you're going to want to remove some of the bolts on the bottom. Most of you guys can figure this out. Okay, so one of the big things you want to make sure you uh, take note of is where something like this happens, where you're going to have a spring going through your cover and just mark it so that you know that for future reference. Taking photos of how it was constructed is always a good idea. Um, this needs to come off first. This is basically your back cover panel. This just kind of covers everything up upholstery-wise. And it just comes off like that. You gotta remove this. Okay, so now we're gonna start removing the pig rings everywhere. Usually some side cuts are probably about the best thing. It usually ends up being a wrestling match, but you wanna be careful not to damage yourself or the cover. Okay, the next thing after you get done removing your hog rings is you're going to want to remove this and it's holding some clips. It's basically uh, a sew-in clip. You don't want to damage it if you can because you're going to have to reuse it. Okay, so when, when you're removing this and you're trying to be careful about it, you can reuse these. Most of the time they are reusable. Um, it's beat up, and this was probably even the original one that came with the Plymouth, but um, you can still reuse it. It's going to be tucked way up in here when, you, when you're done anyways, so it, it's pretty stable. On the back part of this here, as you can see, this is where the hog rings are secured. Um, there's a problem with one of these bolts down here. Normally, I would remove this so that you can remove the seat from the back, but they are cross-threaded, and I do not want to replace those bolts. 
which is not a big issue. I'm just going to make the cover around it. So I'm going to cut this on both sides. And then I'm going to make a reference to it after I cut it to go three inches past with my cord. Okay, so now we're to the point where I'm going to pull the seat cover off. Everything is loose. Simple as that. That's what your cover looks like. Okay, so then the next is the back cover. So for the back cover, under here they had it glued. You've got pig rings again. It's going to be a wrestling match, but you just got to find the right spot to get it. When you get up to the headrest, there's actually pig rings on the headrest. Yeah, you're just removing these pig rings here. Oop, I missed one again. Okay. And there's that. You're going to want to leave this folded inside out anyways because I'm going to show you how to make your hash marks here shortly. Now that the cover is removed, we can use it to make patterns. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make hash marks on the inside of your cover. That way when you're sewing, you're going to know where to land everything. Um, in my opinion, these are extremely important, so you definitely want to do those. So you're going to want to pick places that are obvious. Like here, you can see where the center is already marked. You're gonna to wanna to make a definitive mark there and on all corresponding pieces. And then I would make a hash mark here where this seam is on the seam and then on the other panels as well. These matchup marks will be used to join panels together after they're constructed or cut to size. So when we sew them, we know exactly where they should rest. After that's done, use a seam ripper or scissors and carefully take apart the stitching. Well, also, you're going to want to remove this. There's actually a bar that you pig ring to. That gets sewn into this little pocket here. That wire in a sleeve is often You're called a listing that. rod. It is used to help secure the hog rings in place so the hog rings don't pull through the fabric. Now I'm not going to be necessarily removing all these pieces because there are a lot of identical pieces and or mirrored pieces on this whole project. So we're probably just going to be, well we're not probably, we are going to be cutting things in half. And uh, when you do that, then you have something to reference to when you're sewing. And it just makes a lot thing, things a lot easier. Okay, so once you get to the middle of this. You can actually stop. Okay, so you're going to, you already know what the center is up here. So you're going to want to try to find the center on this as well. Kenny will cut the old cover in half. One side will be used for a reference of how it was constructed and the other for patterning. So I've got a measurement of 16 inches, so that's going to be eight. And then I would cut over just a little bit from the actual center and just cut this piece out. It's not going to matter that I'm crooked right now because I'm going to line those up here in a second. There's our first piece. On the half that he cut apart, he'll continue to take apart those panels and also the piping. Here there is piping, or sometimes referred to as cording, going up the side of the seat back. 
Okay, so outside of the other hash marks, I neglected to show another hash mark that's important. And that's where this pull is actually gonna be on the inside for your headrest. You're gonna want that hash mark too. Okay, so there's another piece. All right, so once you get up here, you're gonna wanna find your centers again. Sometimes cutting makes it a little bit easier for you to find it on both sides. And then you're gonna wanna cut basically down the middle. But if you're a little bit off, it's not a big deal. Just make sure that you're going down your black mark. Okay, there's another piece. My other marks were, so I'm just gonna remark that. You're gonna still, once again, finding the centers. You're basically gonna cut this whole cover in half. You're gonna strike a line right down the center of everything, all the way through the bottom, through your poles on the bottom and everything. Cut right down that black line. Okay, here's your reference. You guys are laying out your patterns and stuff to be cut. You just kind of want to lay them down how the cover actually was. That'll help you from being confused. Well, we got to remove this bottom part here. I'm sorry. The shape and number of panels for your car upholstered seat may be completely different, but the principles covered in this video should help you in constructing your own. Though it may seem confusing at this point, you do have the other half as a reference to how these will be sewn together. Okay, so now you're gonna wanna cut down the black lines on, well, I take that back. You're gonna wanna take out this pole first in the back here, which attaches to the headrest. This is where the pig rings attached to for the headrest. You basically don't have a detached headrest, it's an attached headrest. So they use a pole there. But not only that, you're kind of stretching uh, the cover over a long distance and it's better off that you have a pole in the middle somewhere, not necessarily in the middle or you know somewhere where you're not, you don't have so much distance so it spreads better. Okay, so there's your headrest. And now this is actually a whole piece, but you're gonna cut along these black lines because we're making them different colors. So remove this piece down here. Okay, then you're gonna cut down your lines to do these last two pieces. Just make sure that you have marked on these that there's a half inch seam once again. I didn't mark that. Make sure you mark that. Okay, there's the back. So if you're gonna lay it out about how it was, That's how you would lay it out. That's just so you don't have to, don't get confused. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna shoot taking apart the seat. This is all gonna be about the, basically the same concept as what I just showed you with the back. You're gonna wanna fold her inside out and make your hash marks. Already thrown a mark here for some reason, so we'll just use this. It doesn't really matter where you land your hat. You could make a bunch of hash marks if you wanted to. Um, and some people may want to do that just so that you keep your sewing in line. 
But if you use Sailrite's 3 8 basting tape for vinyl, you will be able to hit your hash marks very easily. Kenny is referring to a double-sided tape called seam stick. We'll be showing that later on. Okay, and then just remember here where we cut it. I made a mark on this on this side of it where you're going to have to have extended cording here. Maybe put another mark there. And underneath you've got these poles that go underneath the seat that I showed moving earlier. Put your centers in there. And then you're just going to start removing everything. These poles to the bottom, you can really use any durable fabric. I wouldn't necessarily use a vinyl to do that because it's, for one, it stretches and um, for you to land a hog ring in that over time, it's probably going to create a tear underneath there. So a good sturdy canvas or, you know, a polyester dyed scrap of some sort that you may use, uh, whatever you whatever you can find that's durable. We'll be using a material called Top Notch 9, available from Sailrite. Again, continue to remove panels of fabric for the half of the seat bottom so we can eventually use them for making okay, the Just make sure when you guys are removing these, these poles that like I, or these clips that uh, you're being somewhat careful about taking those off because like I said, you're going to have to reuse them. Most of the clips that I've used on vehicles, you can just reuse them. Okay. There's two pieces. That one, that one. Okay, this just comes out. So now, just like with the other piece, you are going to find the centers which you can find right here on this side. And just take your mark up. Oh, cut it, I guess. We'll do that. The reason Kenny is cutting this in half is that he will keep one side assembled. The other side he will take apart for patterning. Strike your line. Now you just got a couple more pieces to cut here. So using your black lines, just cut right down your black lines again. The channeled piece will be blue. The opposite half will be white. That's why he's cutting it apart. We just got one more piece to remove here. This slit to the back of the chair is where the hardware uh, for the frame comes through. Okay, here's your final piece. So that gives you an idea how you're gonna lay it out before you get ready to cut it. And then, of course, you have your reference pieces that are just basically the other side of each one of these. So here's half of the seat back and half of the seat bottom. Of all those patterns that we cut apart, we will now use them to create new patterns. Okay, so before you start making your patterns, you're going to want to kind of secure your uh, fabric down or your vinyl down just so it doesn't shift some. Um, sometimes I'll tape it, but in this case, I'm going to use sandbags. So basically, uh, we're going to start cutting the white pieces of the back first. You should have all that stuff marked. When you're doing this, especially pieces that are half pieces, you want to make sure that you have enough room. We need to remove this seam first. Yeah, I should have shot this early. You need to make sure that you're taking the hems out of places that are hemmed. So like I said, basically when you're uh, doing this, you're going to want to make sure that you find your centers. I kind of cut this a little bit off center, so you're going to want to make sure that you've defined those centers. Just make a little cut. Okay. 
So when you lay this, just make sure that when you're flipping it, you're gonna have enough room. You're not running into whatever you have it secured with your sandbags or so forth. Okay, so take your pen, mark the center at the top. Then you're gonna wanna pull a piece of tape. You're gonna wanna secure everything down here. You're not gonna have to worry about this part because you're flipping it, so you can have a nice big long piece of tape there. You need to make note of your hash marks. Usually clip them. So it's secure at the top here. Make sure you don't cover up your hash mark. And then you're just gonna kind of stretch to the bottom. It's not, none of this stuff is gonna be absolutely perfectly flat, but that's not necessarily gonna make too much of a difference. A couple millimeters, you gotta think that this vinyl is gonna actually stretch anyway, so. Okay, so that's basically what that's gonna look like. And you're gonna push your hash down there. Now what you're gonna do is use the edge of this and you're gonna trace around everything. This is so. the back of the seat back. That's why we're going to flip it and make the opposite half. This is just one color. Try not to get your hand in the way, so you just run it right along there. It's actually easier than what you think. Now there's gonna be cuts here, and there's a pocket here. So you're gonna need to make note of that. So you're gonna mark where the seams actually are. And then there's actually a cut here for when you uh, are finished up that you're gonna have to use as a reference point as well. So you wanna mark that too. Oops. Just take your time and be patient, you'll get it. If you take your ruler and just follow where the arches of those are, you can actually just correct your lines. See how that corrected that? That's gonna make it smoother. Okay, so before you start doing these other white patterns, I'm gonna make these other ones here and then come back to this back. You're probably gonna wanna remove the foam at least from these. The center part you'll see of the back that you won't necessarily have to do that because it's gonna be a, a squared measurement. So this is basically, this is gonna be in the center of your back. Um, even though this may not look like it's straight, it's definitely just a straight piece. So I'm gonna account for my half inch seam here. If you wanna measure it, that's fine, but I'm eyeballing, I'm pretty good at eyeballing it, half inch seam. Make sure you get your hash. And these, are, these pieces are pretty easy to lay flat. So you're gonna strike a, a straight line here. And then you are going to tape this, make another hash where that part's gonna be. And then you're gonna tape this down as well. Same process as far as following right along the actual piece. These are all going to be mirrored or the same, so even though I did the other side the opposite with the wrong side up, it's not going to matter because this is going to be the same. I, you'll have to label it differently when we label it, but it's, it's basically going to be the same piece on, piece on both sides. Okay, so now you're going to want to label this number two back. The reason why I labeled this number two instead of number three is because it's actually the opposite side of the fabric. So, like I said, if it's easier for you to lay it the other way, you're just gonna pay attention to your labeling. Okay, so once again, this is symmetrical as well, so it's really not gonna matter how you cut it. I think that this one might be a little bit easier to cut. You're just gonna flip it anyway, so it's not gonna matter. Okay, so you're gonna find your centers once again. Mark those.
Now we'll go back to that first pattern that was halfway done and complete the opposite half by folding it. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to mirror everything that we only cut halves of. So you're just gonna to wanna to cut everything right down the line. Okay, so make sure you do your little cuts on your hashes here. These hash marks are for the sleeve for the wire insertion. Don't cut too deep or you'll cut in your half inch seam. Just make a tiny little cut, quarter inch or less. And you want to do it where your centers are too. All right, so now what you're going to do is take this and flip it. And you can see where the cuts are for your, for your centers. When you see this, when you see here, then you can see here how this is right where the center is. <clears throat> and then you're going to want to tape it. So you're gonna to want to start in the middle and kind of flatten out. It's, the, it's still gonna have a little bit of arch in it. Don't freak out about that, it's not a big deal. We're talking about millimeters here. Okay. Once it's been traced all around the perimeter, it's time to cut it out. We're going to use the rotary cutter with the cutting mat on the bottom side to do that. All right, and there's your back of your back. <laughs> okay, so after you have your number two piece, you can cut it out. We'll be using this to make the opposite half. So after you get this piece cut, this is going to be a mirror of the other piece. So what I do is just flip it this way. Now it's completely cut out and just line it up with this the cut that you've already made. One side is the left side and the other is the right side of the seat back. The middle will have the blue channeling fabric sewn in between these two white pieces. Same process, just cut her on out. Okay, and that's your piece opposite number three. Okay, so the headrest it's going to be the same concept. We did half of it. We're going to flip it after we found our centers. And we're going to tape it off again. See, this is going to want to come up on you a little bit. So start from the center when you're trying to tape this one then. <clears throat> it's just going to naturally do that. And then just begin tracing. For this part, just go right down the center of this, up to your stopping point. Almost every seat's going to have something like this, whether it's going to be a seat belt or where the actual um, mech is. You're just going to cut your piece out. This is where your half inch seam is. That's why my pattern, if you see the shots before, started from here. So you can write that if you want. Okay, and then so for where this piece is, where this is, usually I just go going in towards the center, like an eighth of an inch, just strike another line, stopping where the top of this line is. And then you're gonna cut this out. Okay, so number three is going to be this flipped or mirrored. So you're going to flip it. Once again, make sure your hash marks are on the inside of your cut piece. Okay, 
so now I'm just kind of finding my hash marks that I made earlier. And I'm gonna cut my hash marks with scissors. These are the hardest pieces for you to cut. And they're probably the most important for you to shape. This, these are gonna be the sides of your seat and the sides of your back as well. Because this panel has a lot of shape, Kenny's gonna use a lot of tape to tape it down so that it's nice and flat and doesn't move on him. When he's satisfied, he'll go ahead and mark around the perimeter. I think I keep my pieces of tape like six to eight inches apart on these harder ones. I think that's probably what you're gonna wanna do. Uh, I'm just gonna go straight right here because I'm not 100% sure what this cut is. They may have been, that may have been something they did afterwards, after they sewed it. Okay. All right, so when you get this in a pattern, just like everything else, you're kinda gonna have to connect these. Okay, so this top center piece that goes at the top of the back, maybe it's just lay it out here and try to get the size of it. And then I'm gonna double that because it's twice the size of it. So, so find five and three eighths, mark it to it. Go from the center of there and five, five and three eighths again. Now what I say, so three and a quarter. Mark your three and a quarter here. The pattern is half the size on its length. That's why he's doubling it here. Okay, because of the channeling and because of the seams, I'm gonna measure this at four and a half inches, but you're gonna to have to have a half inch seam on this outside too. So it's actually gonna be 10 inches wide. Again, he's working with half a panel, so he has to double it. And this is gonna be the exact length of, the, length of this already because you already have the seams there and this is going to be 21. So you're going to be a, have a 10 by 21 center piece with the channeling. Okay so the, this is the bottom of the back this wacky looking piece. There's actually a piece of uh, see-through vinyl in the bottom of that. We're going to replace that with just that durable top notch nine with a cording. It's just a pole it's not even seen so I'm just making sure this is going to I'm going to have enough room here to do that with everything you're going to mirror because if you have it too close, you decide to cut it, whoop, you decide to cut it way over here and then you try to mirror it, you're gonna have problems because you're gonna be into other pieces. So that's why I flipped it, just to make sure that I'm gonna be okay. Mark your center. This is another kind of crazy piece, so you might have to put a lot of pieces of tape on it. You can even kind of see where whoever made this pattern didn't even actually follow we're, we're actually doing it really detailed because most people just use a marker, but I think it's a lot easier for you to follow a pen line and be more accurate. Might be better, but... Just for a reference, I'd probably mark where your clips are gonna go. You can make sure you cut your hashes out. You're gonna go ahead and mirror that. A mirrored pattern will face the opposite direction. That's why we have the outside surface of this mirrored piece that we're patterning facing up. The new piece underneath has the outside surface facing the tabletop below. And here's yet another piece that needs to be mirrored. So we flip it so outside surface is facing up. There I am. It goes to the bottom of the uh, the back. This is the one that we uh, patterned half of it, and now we're gonna cut it out and then flip it for the other part of the. Okay, so make sure you cut just a little bit past it, which I did, and then just like everything else, you're gonna mark your centers. Okay. 
and you're gonna fold it down and you can kind of see how this arch is following this that's how you know you're pretty much right Next, Kenny finds the rectangular blue piece that will have channeling sewn in for the center of the seat and he finds the center position of it. You're also going to run your lines now too. So this is going to be your center top stitch. Kind of just make sure you're getting, you can see the pencil line. It's faint, but you can't see it. And then you're gonna go two and a quarter on either side of your center. Make marks. The width of your channeling is totally up to you. When marking the outside surface of the fabric for where you're going to sew your channeling, be sure to use a marking pencil or utensil that will not leave permanent marks. And there's your 10 by 21s. Up next, we'll be adding sew foam to many of the patterns that we just made. Okay, so now we're going to attach the half inch foam to the front sides of the cover of both the seat and the back. We're going to use 1633 foam lock. This is basically just to keep the pieces in place so that we can uh, sew the edges of the pieces eventually here in another steps later. Oops. You're just going to kind of do one even layer. This stuff tacks up pretty quick, so as soon as you get to the bottom of it, you're already going to be ready to start applying the, the pieces. I usually lay them how they're going to actually be on the seat. So you want to start by putting the center down first and then just smoothing to the edge and try to keep wrinkles out of it, but it's, you don't want obvious wrinkles, but if it's wrinkling a little bit, it's not a huge deal. So set your setter down first, and then you're laying to the edge. Smooth. Last piece for the seat. Same process, center down first, smoothing the edge. The blue piece for channeling that was marked with the yellow grease pencil actually All left right. marks that were totally so visible to after we were done sewing, so we had to redo it and use Set a pencil. First. You're just trying to get it to secure to it. You're actually going to sew around the edges of everything anyway, so it's, it's not a huge deal. I'm just going to cut these out and set them aside. Okay, I'm just laying down the back pieces now. And this is the quarter inch foam. They didn't use quarter inch foam on any of it, but I'm going to because it helps fill your covers. And I would recommend anybody that's making their own covers to use quarter inch foam on places that they didn't even use foam at all. Okay, so now we're gonna start cutting out the pieces uh, that we have glued to the sew foam. This is a pretty simple process. You're just gonna basically cut around every piece as close to the piece as possible. Spraying the foam lock only to the foam does not make for a permanent bond. If you'd like for a permanent bond, which is okay, you can spray it to the underside of the vinyl as well and the foam and it will be more permanent. Okay, so we're winding down here and cutting our pieces out. And this kind of strange one here that we've got in the back. You just want to be careful you don't go too deep with it. But what you do need to be conscious of are your hash marks that you made. So you should have cut all of your hash marks prior to this. See, I've got one here. So you're just going to go and look for those on all the pieces and then just make a little black mark with your, with your Sharpie. Just put my hash marks in. 
the sew foam was added to patterns that are going to be on the outside surface of the seat. There's no reason to add sew foam to any of the fabric poles. Next, we're going to sew around the perimeter of the pieces that had sew foam added to them. Okay, so these are the pieces that before we sew around everything that you are not going to sew around. You're not going to sew around the bottom part of the back because it doesn't have any foam. And then the center pieces of the seat and the back. And you don't want to sew around the edge of these because you're going to be sewing channels in these. And you don't want the foam to pucker up from you sewing on the outside first. Okay, so now we're just going around the outside of every piece that has foam, which is pretty much every piece that you cut. Now you're only gonna wanna go in, you know, about an eighth of an inch and never more than a quarter of an inch. See, so just take your time. Stay close to the edge, but make sure you're hitting the foam. Kind of a reference point would maybe be, try to stay like right on this foot. Pretty good reference point. We'll be using the Sayrite Fabricator sewing machine with the workhorse servo motor to sew this upholstered car seat. Wow, the control on this is amazing. This is the first time that Kenny has used the Sayrite Fabricator with the workhorse servo motor, and I must say he is impressed. All right, so on these pieces that have uh, the slit cut out, basically you're just gonna stop and start at a certain point. So you're gonna take it nice and slow. Now this half inch stuff, you have to push down a little bit harder. It's a lot easier if you just push down to make it a little bit more flat before you're actually running your needle through the vinyl. And when you get to the end, just reverse a little bit maybe. Yeah, just make sure that you guys are pushing down the foam a little bit. Pushing the vinyl to the foam, I guess I should say, to flatten it out. Especially with this half inch stuff because it's going to want to try to pop off your run if you don't do that. And just a little reverse. go ahead and continue around. We'll repeat this process for, for all the for pieces tarp, that yeah. have sew foam, except for the um, pieces with the channeling. You may have already cut your fabric poles, but uh, we have not, so we're going to show you how to do that next. Okay, so now we're going to cut the poles. The poles go on the inside of the headrest right here. This is what pulls into the top back part of the seat. This fabric pole will pull the cover fabric into a channeling in the foam, giving it a contoured look. Here it is shown in a future step being attached with hog rings. And that's going to be two by ten. And then there's also a pole right here that goes, this is, goes to the bottom of the back of the seat. Here you can see us using that fabric pole in a future step to pull the backrest underneath the bottom of the chair and then attach it using hog rings to the metal frame. And this is going to be 2 by 15. A great fabric for fabric poles is Top Notch 9, available from Sayerite. As you can see, that's where that goes. Set it aside. Now we're going to cut our 2 by 10 for the headrest pull. And on both of them, just fold them in half, find the centers and cut, just to make note of the centers. And that's that. Okay, so we're gonna just cut, make sure we're three quarters of an inch away from the edge, or like I said, about three quarters of an inch. This is the pattern piece that's underneath the chair. It too pulls the fabric the cover line. over the frame, so it is considered a fabric pole. We're using top notch nine for this as well. Okay, so up top here, you're not going to be three quarters of an inch because this is where it gets attached to the cover, so you can just run that line straight across. And 
and then once again three quarters of an inch from this edge. And then down here you have this cutout. You're just going to trace that. Then you just have two more pieces. There's two of these. We're going to cut one and use the other one as a pattern. So you want to make sure you're about three quarters of an inch away where your cording is going to be. There's not really any hashes or anything you need to make with this. So you may be asking, what in the world is the cording for? These are fabric poles that are not visible. Well, the cording is used to help to reinforce the fabric for the future hog ring installations. So the hog ring doesn't pull against the fabric, but it actually pulls against the cording in a sleeve. Make sure you make your little hole for your cutout. This rotary cutter and the cutting mat can be purchased from Sailrite, but if you don't have that, you can simply use scissors. The next piece we're going to cut out is really not a fabric pole. We're going to cut it out of vinyl. Okay, so we got one more small piece of vinyl to cut out. This piece is what gets sewn into this, which ends up hanging down like this, and it just kind of covers up uh, that part. So it looks like we've got about three inches by nine. We need two of them. There's one on the left side and one on the right side. And then you just want to make note of the centers of these also. Just fold them in half and cut out your little notches. Okay, so now we're going to cut this back piece right here. And this is the back piece of the seat. It's this piece right here. This piece is what you're going to uh, hog ring to in the back part of the frame and also the bottom part of the seat. And it's 19 by 2 inches. Why are we making this fabric pull out of vinyl? Well, because here in a future step, you can see that it can actually be seen at the bottom of our chair and it might be visible. So we're gonna, so cording onto it so we can reinforce the future installation of the hog rings. And that's your piece. This is gonna get cording sewn into one side of it. Many of the fabric poles need to be reinforced with cording or piping, and we need to sew the pleats into the blue fabric. This is Cindy Fletcher with Quilts and Cushions. She's gonna be sewing everything today. She's gonna to be putting the uh, cording around the outside edge of these pieces. These go on the bottom of the two bucket seats in front. You're gonna run the cording along here, and then at the bottom, and then the other side as well starting about a half inch. And then she's also gonna be sewing the channeling for the two center blue pieces on the seat and the back. We'll be using a foam piping or welting cord that uh, we fold into a sleeve or channel at the uh, bottom edge of each of these fabric poles where Kenny had indicated. This is the bottom panel, the panel that goes underneath the bucket seats. We discussed this already, but the only task of this welding or cording is to reinforce the fabric for the future installation of the hog rings. Now we'll sew on the opposite long leg, same process. We will not show all of this. Then on the short side where the U was cut in, we will install a cording on the two edges of that as well. You can always refer back to your original piece so that you know exactly where the cording should be sewn in. Okay. Cindy's also going to be sewing the bottom of these. The cording goes at the bottom of these pieces. Just like this in just one spot, and then of course you're gonna make note of the hole. These fabric poles go on the bottom side of our bucket seats. They will never be visible again. We have two of these. We need to do the same thing with the second one. Let's move on. Now let's find that vinyl piece that goes at the back of our seat bottom. 
and we need to sew piping into it to reinforce it for the hog rings as well. And now for the pieces that have the channeling sewn into them. Here you can see the yellow marks are gone because the grease pencil actually was impossible to remove from the vinyl and we are working with the pieces where we used a pencil and we are placing our straight stitches right on top of the line that we struck on the vinyl material with a half inch sew foam underneath it. This creates great pleats for the top and the backrest of our bucket seat. We need to do this to both of the blue panels. I believe all of our panels are now ready to be sewn together. Up next, sewing seat bottom panels together. Okay, so now Cindy's gonna put together the seat. Um, she basically is gonna be starting from the center out. Now that we have all our pieces put together, but first she is going to want to attach these pieces they go on the inside here. Let's get this direction. And this helps cover up your hardware. Before those pieces of fabric get sewn onto the slit area at the bottom of the seat, cording needs to be sewn on. So that's what Cindy is doing first. She's sewing on the prefabricated cording available from Sailrite. How do you know if this needs to be done? Well, you can always refer back to your old seat cover and see what they did. But generally, this makes that cutout look better. And notice that she stops sewing before reaching the end of the vinyl fabric. And then she does some reversing. That's because she wants to cut away the piping that comes close to that raw edge. Because there, we need a half inch seam allowance to sew on the fabric pole. Now the small piece that Kenny talked about is sewn over top so outside surfaces are facing each other. Then when it's turned right side out, it'll look like a finished edge. As she works around this corner, notice that she buries the needle and lifts the presser foot slightly, then takes turns, lowers the presser foot, and then continues to sew. That's an easy way to get around a large transitional curve like that. Okay, so now that Cindy's sewn these for us, we're going to connect these pieces, but you're going to want to baste them first. So you're going to want to run your basting tape just as close to the edge as you can. The basting tape is not required, but it is a very helpful aid, especially for those that are not professional. Just as close to the edge as you can. This is 3 8 basting tape. What this seam stick does is allows you to stick panels together prior to sewing to hold them in place. So when you take them to the sewing machine, you know exactly where panels are going to fall. Outside surfaces of adjacent panels are facing each other. Then Kenny carefully baste them so that the raw edges are lined up with each other. Now we take them over to the sewing machine. Before sewing your panels, test some scrap vinyl with sew foam glued to it to see if you have the appropriate tension set on your sewing machine. You may need to increase the foot pressure since the foam is rather dense. It'll need to compress it while it is being sewn. So inspect your finished stitches before you go and sew the final panel. When you come to sew the final panel, sew a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric, reversing at the beginning and the end, and sew a stitch length of about five or six millimeters in length. I also recommend sewing panels together without using the cording foot, but with the regular foot. It'll compress it better than the cording foot. So now the two white pieces have been sewn with the blue piece in the center. And this is the back piece of the seat. It's this piece right here. This piece is what you're gonna uh, hog ring to in the back part of the frame and also the bottom part of the seat. Okay, so this is the piece Cindy just sewed that's gonna attach to the back of this. I'm just finding the center of this, making a mark for her. And it's gonna be attached just like this. This fabric pole has been positioned at the back of our seat bottom centered and Cindy is sewing it so outside surfaces are facing each other. 
The Cindy prefers to leave the cording foot on and sew everything with the cording foot on. That way she doesn't have to change it out between the standard foot and the cording foot. However, I recommend installing the standard foot on the sewing machine when sewing through sew foam. Uh, I believe it compresses the foam a little bit better than the cording foot. Unfortunately, if you do that, you'll have to change the foot out at several intervals in order to sew piping on. You'll notice here that the white panel doesn't uh, line up as well with that blue panel, so Cindy fared it out uh, by sewing that fabric pull-on as though the panels were lined up. That's always a good idea. So now we have a fabric pull that also looks good that may actually be visible in the end. If you remember at the beginning of this video, Kenny talked about the fact that he couldn't take apart the seat completely because some bolts were uh, cross-threaded. So typically, usually that fabric pole would go all the way from the left side to the right side, but since it did not, and we had to make a slit to enable us to pull the seat bottom into position, we are going to sew cording on the two uh, ends that doesn't have it. So this is just a short piece of cording. And notice that we're leaving the two ends long. We are not cutting them so they are flush up against the fabric. Leave them about five to six inches long on both sides at those ends. Okay, so now we're gonna make this piece. And this actually gets attached to this piece. So what you need to do is run seam tape from here all the way to here. Okay, so after you've ran your basting tape around the edge of everything, the final thing is, is that you're going to put this piece on like this. These are always different, so you're just going to have to pay attention from cover to cover. Here's a beautiful fact of why we cut the cover in half, in other words, the old cover in half. So we have a reference of how to install the components for the new cover. So you can always refer back to the old cover to see how this uh, J-clip was sewn in. You may be asking, why didn't we pull out all those old stitches? from previous sew jobs on this J-clip. Well, that's because nobody sees it. It rolls under. Here we're sewing the second J-clip to the opposite side. Same process, let's move on. Okay, now we're to the portion where we're gonna apply this cording. This is the old piece and this is the seat. As you can see, as it runs along the outer edge of the seat, you're gonna wanna make this about 12, 10 to 12 inches past. We'll go 10 inches past the edge of uh, where the end of the seat is. If you have used the standard foot, you will now need to install the cording foot and sew this piping on around the perimeter. Again, we are using the Sayerite Fabricator sewing machine set up with the Workhorse Servo Motor, a great sewing machine package that's available from Sayerite. It is true, we're sewing through vinyl fabric, quarter inch sew foam, now we're stepping up to a half inch sew foam and the vinyl fabric. There is a lot of thickness here, but you can tell that the Sayerite Fabricator sewing machine with that cording foot sews it beautifully. If you also own the Sayerite Ultrafeed sewing machine, whether it be the LS1 or the LSZ1, it too should be able to handle this application easily. Okay, so now we have these pieces completed. It's going to attach here all the way around. And then that's this part of your original seat. You don't necessarily have to have basting tape on both sides, but I do. Just line it up and stick it down. It's ready to be sewed. The left side and the right side wraps around to the front and there is a seam at the center of the seat bottom. That's what's being sewn together at this point. Then we can baste it and sew it onto the top part. Okay, so this is what your band looks like after you put it together, what I'm calling the band. You're gonna remove your basting tape 
The traditional names for this can be boxing, facing, banding, or sides. So you know this is the center where you're going to start on your band. You know that this stitch is the center. So you're going to begin basting. This is this hash represents where this stitch is going to be. So when you're basting, you may have to tuft it a little bit as you go. So a lot of times I'll stick it in both places. And you can already see it's kind of already tufting itself to the center. Same thing over here. You're going to want to find where that is. You're gonna to want to just keep going around. Make sure you find your hash marks. You can see there's a hash right there. That's how you know you're right with your cutting. That's how you know you're right with your hash marks. This just continues down. All the way down to the cording. See, I'm even doing the cording here to it. Now we can take it over to the sewing machine and start sewing from one of the ends. It's always easier to keep the bulk of the assembly out from the throat of the sewing machine. And we do have to have a cording foot on to sew this since we are sewing right next to the piping on the underside. There are some thick transitions that we have to walk over, like here is a cording piece that we're actually sewing through. But the fabricator sewing machine and your alter feed sewing machine should easily walk over that. If anything has become unbasted, be sure that uh, you baste it together or just be assured that your panels are still lined up well as you sew around the perimeter. Here at the middle position, Cindy will fold back that uh, stitch so that she can just walk over it and it lays flat. Lots of bulk here. All right, so all around the perimeter, we're gonna move on. Only a few more steps left for the seat bottom, then we can move on to the seat back. Okay, we got, we just have two more steps left. We're gonna sew this to this, and then we're also gonna sew these right next to it. Notice that outside surfaces are facing each other. By that, I mean the hem is facing up. So Cindy has lined this up with the center position. We did not base this in place and just start sewing on. This is a fabric pole. It will not be visible. When she gets to the end of this, it too has a piping or cording sewn into it for the hog ring installations. She will add that smaller piece so that the pipings are lined up. You can refer back to your original cover, the half that we did not cut apart, to see how it was constructed. Notice the edge is not square, it is rounded. So Cindy is moving that small fabric pole around so that it is lined up as best as possible to the raw edge of the fabric. 
Does it have to be perfect? In no means does it have to be perfect. It is a fabric pole. We also need to add the small piece on the opposite side. We'll only show a portion of that. Okay, so this is your finished seat bottom. And it's basically ready to apply. Okay, up next is the seat back. The principles are basically the same, but we're still gonna show it. Okay, now that we're done with the seat, we're ready for the back of the seat. And we're gonna start from the center out, just like we did with the seat. And first of all, you're gonna run basting tape along your channeled vinyl. Okay, so now that Cindy has this sewn for us, we're gonna do the headrest. But before we put, attach the headrest to it, she's gonna to need to attach the pole that we cut earlier, the two by 10 strip, and it's gonna get a piece of cording in it also. As we mentioned before, the cording reinforces the fabric strip for the installation of the hog rings. Now please notice that the headrest is facing so the outside surface is down against our industrial tabletop and the fabric pole is being sewn to the wrong side of that headrest centered uh, on the edge of the headrest. Do some reversing at the beginning and the end. Okay, so now after this is sewn on, you're just gonna find your center here and you're gonna run a strip of basting tape along the edge just like everything else. So the headrest will be basted onto the seat back so the outside surfaces are facing each other centered. Let's run it all the way to the edge. Now we'll take this over to the sewing machine and sew a stitch a half inch from the looks. raw edges. Uh, that way it'll secure these two panels together, the headrest and the seat back. It also secures that fabric pole in place yet again. So did we need to sew it uh, prior to this? Probably not, but it's not a bad idea. We could have sewed it all three at the same time. In a previous chapter, we already cut the fabric poles. However, we neglected to make one more. So Kenny will explain it here. So now we're gonna cut this piece here. We're actually gonna replace this with uh, the top notch knight and use a piece of cording at the bottom of it. So it's gonna be two and three quarters by 15 inches. Okay. And then that piece is going to go right here with cording on the bottom. And then this piece is going to attach to the bottom of this. After the cording's been installed for the uh, reinforcement of the hog rings, she will sew it onto that final piece. Outside surfaces are facing each other. In other words, the hem is facing up. Now she will sew it onto the bottom of the seat back. She is sewing a half inch from the raw edges of the fabric. And if the white side doesn't line up with the blue side, she will fare it out here. As you can see here, the white vinyl is sticking out of the edge slightly because it doesn't line up perfectly with the blue panel. And that is customary and expected when you sew applications like this. Here again on this side, the white panel goes a little bit further than the blue panel. So again, she's fairing it out uh, when she sews this fabric pole on. Those inconsistencies will not cause you any difficulty. Don't worry about them. OK, 
Okay, so the next part we're gonna do is this band here. So you're gonna wanna have seam stick on either side of the center part of the band. This center part of the band is actually the top portion above the headrest. It is basted to the left side and the right side with outside surfaces facing each other. Be sure that you do not flip one of the panels the wrong way. You can always refer back to your original cover she's that, ready to sew that we didn't cut apart to see mm -hmm. if it's correct. Okay, so next we're gonna use cording and attach it. That's what this is right here. This is what we're gonna do. And it's gonna run from the bottom here all the way around to there. Okay, now that she's got the cording on the outside here, now we're gonna apply the band, but we're gonna have to put seam stick on first. So you're just gonna run your seam stick all the way from the bottom of the cording, all the way around. When applying seam stick or double-sided tape, if you use it at all, be sure that you keep it as far away from the piping as possible so it doesn't show up when you're done sewing. Okay, so now we're just gonna attach your band to it. All right, so find your center. There's where your center is. And you're just gonna start hitting hash marks. You may notice that, that small rectangle at the top of our seat back with the sew foam was not sewing around the perimeter. It probably should have, but it typically won't cause any problems since the panel's so small. Now there's not a hash here, but this is where that seam is. There's a hash on this one, but not on this but that's exactly where the seam's supposed to land, so you know you're correct. Make sure you're laying on your hash marks. Once it is basted, you can take it to the sewing machine and sew around the perimeter. We are sewing it with a cording foot installed because we are sewing right next to the cording yet again. Similar process that we did on the seat bottom. Here is a pretty sharp transition. Watch what Cindy does here to get around this almost 90 degree turn. That's all she does. Now she sews around the entire perimeter. Okay, so now we're on the last and final piece for the back. That's this piece right here. Before we attach that piece, we're gonna have to make a little pocket here. And before we did that, before we cut this piece, we made some hash marks. So I'm gonna make some lines so that Cindy knows where to put her seam. This is where a pocket will be formed to hold the wire. This center line, you don't have to do that. You're gonna do the two outside lines. That represents the size of the pocket. Okay, so on this piece, before you make the pocket, you're gonna notice that there's a diagonal, it's about a 45 degree cut right there, and there's a hash right there. That's what this center hash represents. You're just gonna take your scissors, cut a little 45 degree hash in there, and then that's gonna be folded over and sewn. And then you're gonna make a pocket using these lines. So that 45 degree basically allows us to create almost a half inch hem here at the bottom edge to fold the fabric back to make it uh, look like a finished piece there. We did that on both sides. Now we'll sew on top of that line that he struck on the sew foam. Outside surfaces are facing each other to create the pocket for the insertion of the wire often called listing rod. The wire that's inserted in the sleeve reinforces 
uh, the fabric for the installation of hog rings yet again. Okay, so now we're going to attach the back piece to it now that we've got our pocket. And we're going to run seam tape from about where the pocket starts all the way around. Cindy's just going to baste this for me. When basting panels like this, always start from the center and work your way out. You're going to see that your hash marks are, are going to, you're going to need to tuft it quite a bit to make sure that your hashes line up with your seams. And that's because of the curvature of the top of the headrest. Once it's basted, we'll take it to the sewing machine and sew around the perimeter. Again, a cording foot is necessary because we are sewing right next to the piping. It's always a good idea to start sewing so that the bulk of the seat back is out from underneath the throat of the sewing machine, as you can see here. We are going to show going around this corner. You want to make sure that you do not sew any of the fabric accidentally that's on the underside. Uh, so Cindy pushes it out away so that she's ensured that she won't sew an accidental wrinkle into the actual cover fabric or banding as Kenny refers to it as. Wrestle with these for a minute. Now we'll turn it right side out. And next thing is put them on. Whoa, before we put them on, we need to be concerned about uh, securing the closure flap at the bottom of the seat back. That's next. When we removed these backs, I realized that uh, this was glued at the bottom of the seat here. So I think instead of doing that, we're gonna go ahead and attach a piece of uh, one inch Velcro to both sides of the cover. So basically the Velcro is gonna be here on the inside of this. And then it's gonna be on the outside of this piece right here so that you can achieve this. So this is 15 inches, so we can come an inch in on both sides, so we'll make it 13 inches. We'll apply double-sided tape to the back side of the loop, or you can apply it to the fabric pole as Kenny is here. Make sure you don't get it on your cording, which I almost did. This part's not a perfect science, you're just getting it attached. So just lay your base down again. Now before you put this piece on, I kind of just make sure that uh, you're going to land in the right place. And that seems like it's going to be okay to do that there. Okay, you're ready to sew now. Okay, so you're gonna wanna be about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Start and then reverse.
will sew this loop in place and we'll also sew the hook in place. Make sure you're not catching anything underneath. We're not gonna show sewing the hook in place. Contoured seating sometimes has fabric poles that pull the fabric into the foam. That's next. Okay, so when working with our seat, since I changed the design, I realized that on the outside of the channeling in this seam, I'm gonna have to apply Velcro to both the seat and, or to the foam on the seat, and then also to the cover. So what I'm gonna do is you can actually see where the channeling or where that seam ends up being. You can see it on the seat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that mark more clear with a marker. See, I'm running right along where that uh, channel ends here, and where the seam is gonna be. And I'm just gonna mark it with my marker here. And you're gonna go all the way up. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. You can just barely see where that's gonna end up being. This is a bucket seat, and it does have some contour to it, though not very much. So here at the seat back, he's gonna do the same thing here, so that he can pull the fabric down into the foam slightly. As you can see originally, the seat had no fabric poles to pull the cover into the foam, but we're gonna add some. Okay, so now I'm basically gonna make a little trough. and It's gonna be similar to this one up here, except I'm not gonna go quite that deep by any means. You're only gonna probably go, I don't know, like an eighth of an inch deep. So really maybe about just below this, the circle on your Dremel, I guess, maybe. Do not push down hard. <laughs> and use your thumb, use your hand as a guide when you're making your little trough here. Because you do not want to go too deep. Whoa. See how it's just making a little trough here? Ooh, that's a nice trough. If this bucket seat that's were more easy. shapely formed, you would probably already find a uh, trough in the foam or either two separate pieces of foam and in between that trough or two separate pieces of foam you would find either hook and loop or a wire in a sleeve with hog rings attached to the metal frame below. See my trough is, I don't know, it's about an inch, three quarters of an inch wide. You're going to do the same process on the back. Okay, so to get the length of your loop that's gonna be sewn on your cover, it's gonna be sewn on the cover right here on this seam and it's gonna be sandwiched. We're gonna show you that in a second. But to get that size, you're gonna be about one inch from where the seat begins right here. Oh, well, maybe an inch and a half. So just inside of your trough and then you wanna stop about an inch before you get to this edge here where that seam is gonna be. And then this doesn't have to be a perfect thing. So once you get that, then you know to make the loop on the other side the same length. Okay, so now the, I'm thinking the best way to do this is run 3 8 based along the edge of your Velcro piece. This is the loop side of a hook and loop. And on the back side of this loop, we're attaching seam stick basting tape on both long edges. You're gonna go right down this seam here and sandwich it. So about an inch from here where that seam is. And you wanna kind of, I don't know, be like an eighth of an inch maybe away from your seam on this side so that you can sandwich it correctly. And then when you get to this side, you're gonna have to just keep pressing every, but start from the middle, I think, is the best way. And just keep sandwiching it in there as you go. Oh. 
Don't worry if your foam's poking out a little bit there. You just got to make sure that you're going to hit the vinyl. You want to try to get the foam as much as you can, but it's not going to be much of a big deal. So there we go. So now we're ready to sew. We're just going to sew this in. <clears throat> now you're going to want to make sure that you're deep enough that you're going to catch everything here when you sandwich it. And if you miss it, then just go back and hit it again. It's not a big deal, but you do not want to go so deep that you come outside and get into your channels or into your cover because then you're going to be angry. So just be cautious when you're doing this, but aware that you're getting everything. We will only show one of both of the seams that need to have this loop sewn on. I turn it inside out again. Okay, so we're going to do the same process with the seat on the back, you're just gonna find this seam. Use the same measuring technique as I did on the seat and then attach to this seam right here on this part of the back and then also on this part of the back. All right, so now in our troughs here that we've made, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some of this dual lock in there. And to get the size of it first, we're just going to do the same thing we did, and it's with the, uh, the loop. And go about an inch and a half from the back here, and about an inch from the front. And that also is not an exact process. And you're going to cut one piece of the one inch. But I'm thinking that we're really only going to need half of this one inch piece. So that'll save you in some materials. And that's what will run down that trough. So. 3M Dual Lock is a very aggressive hook and loop type fastener system. It attaches to itself and it does not need a loop side. However, if used with a standard loop, it holds exceptionally well. Since we only need half of its width, Kenny is saving money by cutting it in half. Let's go ahead and remove the adhesive back right now. Don't set it up against anything it's going to stick to but you're definitely gonna want to put enough in there, but you don't want it spilling out all over the place either, so find that happy medium. The double-sided adhesive on the 3M Dual Lock is aggressive, but not aggressive enough to stick to the foam, so we recommend using a hot glue gun like this. Okay, once we get to about half, in lieu of making your own system of hook and loop like we are here, you do have the option of buying professional hook Oops. and knit loop systems. Those systems may soon be available at Sayerite for contoured cushions like this. Some seats that are more contoured than this one would require a deeper trough to pull the seams down even further into the foam. And once that kind of sets in a little bit, go ahead and do the other side of your trough. An alternative method to hook and loop like this is to use a sleeve with wire that is pulled in between two layers of foam or a contoured piece versus a flatter piece. And then hog rings are used to attach to the metal frame on the underside. If you have a system like that, what you would do is start attaching the cushion cover via those hog rings here at the contoured shape. Then you would pull the cover around the foam and continue attaching it around the perimeter of the cover. It all depends on how the manufacturer made the seat. Might have to hold the end of this in here a second until the glue sets up completely. Okay, so this is going to be the same process for the back, so you're just going to Find your length, inch from the top here, or about that, and then cut it and do the same thing. It's now time to fit the seat bottom over the foam. Okay, so now we are to the portion where we are going to apply your cover. And this is gonna go to the seat. So you are gonna wanna start like this, so that you are exposing these and you're gonna to wanna to do that because you're gonna to have to lay that down first. So the easiest way to do this is to find your seam with the cording on it. 
it's going to land right here. So that's this seam right here, and you know this is the center. So you lay this down to where this is going to be in the center and even here, and you can see it's already, I'm already wanting to stick. So you don't want to just try to slide this on. So you start here, and then you're going to know more or less how your Velcro is supposed to land. But you want to kind of spread it, make sure that you're spreading it out. See how we're already sticking here? But you're going to be golden because you're right here where this needs to be. So you just stick it down as you go back. And then the same thing on this side here. I'm kind of making sure I'm spreading it open some as I go back. But you also don't want to bunch it because if you bunch it, then it's going to show. So that looks about where I need it. So now I'm going to open it up. First thing I'm going to do is push this center part to the back side. In upholstery, you want to start everything from the center and move to the outsides. So I'm just tucking this stuff under here. And I'm kind of tucking down in there so that I'm going around my hardware and stuff. Now that I've got my Velcro stuck, you're just going to flip this down. Kind of making sure you don't, you're stuffing the cushion in as you're going there. See, look at that. Now, it's not going to shift in the middle. I'm just pushing this through from one side to the other, trying to find everything. Get a shot of what I'm trying to do. And I'm just working it around everywhere, checking things. Okay. So now, all right, so now once again, you're going to start from your center. I'm just trying to find what's going to be the best position here. It looks like maybe this. Be careful when you're pulling stuff around things. Remember, everything is metal, so you can definitely jab something through something if you're not careful, but that's also what this quarter inch foam is gonna help you with. Okay, so make sure you're down the center. And these poles are gonna line up and you're gonna actually go through this hole and both pieces of the pole. You're just gonna have to keep referring back and forth to make sure that you feel like you're okay. But you're gonna wanna check this side too. Well, they actually have a, they actually have holes right there. Okay, so you're gonna wanna start from this hole. Punch through with your awl. First piece, 
and then where, whereabouts this one's going to be, making sure that you're on the inside of your cording here. See how that's going to kind of land right here in that hole. Then you're going to take your hog rings. Set it through your first piece of fabric. We're going to go ahead and use a hole punch. Maybe mark it with the awl and then use a hole punch. There we go. So go through your fabric, through that. Well. Unfortunately, at the time of filming, we did not have hog rings with sharp points. We only had hog rings for shock cord. That's why Kenny had to use a hole punch to uh -huh. punch through the fabric. Yeah, that'll be all right. However, we do currently have the hog rings with the sharp points, so you don't have to worry about that'll using a hole punch to punch through the fabric anymore. Yeah, it's definitely tight enough. See, I go, I go through the back part of the fabric. Then I'm pushing up through the frame. Or I'm trying to. <laughs> there we go. Then you just got to get it up around that lip. <clears throat> Again, had we used hog rings with sharp points, this all, and punching through the top notch nine fabric or the pole fabric would not be required. The part number shown here shows hog rings with sharp points. Are you you getting shots okay? And you're going through the pole. Then I'm going to go through the frame and then back all to the other side through the hole that I created with the awl and the cover. Okay so now that I've got this back part with a center pole attached. Like I said, everything from the center out. But you're, I think that now we're gonna wanna do the sides here. So, I'm just checking to make sure, see how everything's nice and tight up here. This all looks good. I like my positioning. So this is gonna get rolled actually two times. So you roll it once and roll it again. And then you're gonna pull. Now there's a little lip right here you're gonna to wanna to turn that lip around your edge as you're pushing up. And see, I'm just catching, I'm just kinda of making sure this is gonna, and that's nice and tight too, that's perfect. Okay. So, we'll shoot this side instead. So this is gonna get actually flipped two times because you're gonna to wanna to take this lip right here and make sure that it's curling around this part of the frame. So if you kinda of just line it up there and keep it there and start turning, you can actually feel the, here, clipping as I'm moving up the frame here. I've got something going on there. But you can hear the clips popping. See how I'm on there now? You just gotta kinda make sure you're still pulling towards the back. Okay, so after you got this clipped in, then I'm thinking that maybe we should go toward to this. And this is a pretty simple thing, but you also wanna kinda find, I didn't cut these holes out. So, take your awl and kinda mark where your hole's gonna be for your bolts on the bottom of the frame. Same thing with this side here. <laughs> Some 
scissors that don't work. So take your awl, go through one part, make sure you're staying on the inside of the cord. And this is just a mark, once again, where you're gonna hole punch. Hog rings with sharp points would not require the hole to be punched. Now everybody's seats are gonna be different, so you may not even have to do this. This may be a totally different thing for, for you, but this is a common practice, especially for an older vehicle, to have stuff like this. So everybody out there that's doing an older vehicle, this is a pretty similar process for many of the older vehicles. We'll do the same process on the other side. Okay, so you're just gonna have to kind of be patient with this when you do this and look for the spots where things are gonna land. Um, once again, like starting from the center here and make sure you're kind of pulling out. See, this is gonna be actually past this a little bit so that this kind of still stays flat. You kind of have to do what you have to do sometimes to get it to do what you want. So I'm gonna put this hole up further. Now I'm gonna to wanna to catch this also. So when I'm looking for this part of the hole, I probably wanna go back a little bit further from actually where it's going to land. See how I'm like gonna, I'm gonna go back some. And that's just because I wanna stretch it past that to try to bring this further back too. So. And you're just gonna to have to kind of look for places like that and make a determination of whether you need to do that paying attention to your cover from all angles. Okay, so I'm gonna go through here first. Okay, now that's all secure there. Okay, so we're gonna wanna make sure this is underneath this lip here. Okay, so when this wraps around, you're gonna actually have to uh, secure this to some of these holes as you go back. So some of these are gonna actually get two pig rings. And I'm taking the foam out of here just so I can find this hole. And I have foam attached to the pad anyway, so I'm more concerned whether I'm gonna hit this, hit my hole or not here. Okay. Okay, I'm just trying to bring my cover back just a little bit here. Because what needs to happen is that I need to hit a hog ring right here in this corner. Which. is definitely achievable because you can see I can reach it, but I do not know if this hog ring is going to make it, but I'm gonna try. Because that's what we do here at Sale Right. We try. I'm not so sure if I didn't hit it. Hey! hey! We try and achieve. <laughs> Good job, now repeat it on the other side. Just like the other side, I'm gonna take, actually go past a little bit. All right, so now sometimes you're gonna have to use the holes twice. 
put two pig rings in it because it would be very difficult for you to try to do one pig ring for all. This just wraps around the back. This is not something that you have to sit there and really, really pull on. It's basically just covering up a lot of what you have here. And then there's actually another cover plate that goes over the top of this, which we'll get to later. Once again, using your awl, I'm just kind of finding where the other pig ring was. I'm going through it. And now I'm through those layers. And make sure you try to hit the cording right underneath of it. That's what you're trying to do. You don't necessarily have to put one right here. This is all covered. Nothing's going to happen there. So they didn't do it either. So what we achieved over here, we're doing the same thing on this side. Just make sure you tuck in all your cording and stuff, just like I did on the other side. And then you're going to attach this. All this stuff is covered up by the faceplate. OK. So this is what the seat looks like applied. Looks good. So now we're going to put the back on. Great job, Kenny. Now comes the seat back. The process is similar, but slightly different. OK, so we've got this folded inside out. And I'm going to go ahead and pre-punch the holes for this, because this is the pole that goes on the inside for the headrest. So I'm just going to use these channels and just punch holes where the channels are. And uh, that way, they're kind of going to be evenly spaced or I know they're going to be evenly spaced because of that. Make sure you're not catching anything you don't want to catch and that you are on the inside of the cording. Had we used hog rings with sharp points, the pre-punching would not be necessary. Well, I think I'm going to give it even an extra hole. So I think I'm going to go right in the middle of a channel. Same thing over here. So in the middle of this channel, just in case I don't like where those holes are, I can have the option of using another hole. So then we'll just follow where this channel is for this one. Same thing on this side. And then go in the middle of this channel. All right, so to get this on here, you must start like this. And you're going to push the headrest back up through here. But you're only going to push the headrest back up through here. And that's it. Because in order to get to this, you're going to have to partially put this on. And this is also a wrestling match. Just checking it. See if I'm tight at the top there. The manufacturer of this chair installed a metal bar in the frame, and that's what Kenny is attaching the hog rings to for this headrest. And you're just going to start from the middle and go out. This can be, you just have to be patient because this can become quite uh, frustrating sometimes to try to hit this at the right angle, but just stick with it. 
Ikeni punched a lot of holes in the fabric pole, but he will not use all of them, only enough to secure it well within the foam. Okay, so at the bottom here, this rod or this uh, little piece of wire, that's where it goes in your pocket there. So you're just gonna push that in, because you need that to apply your pig rings. Okay, and after you have that in, the best way to do this is to stick your hands in there. And you're just gonna start working this down. My hand is right here. And I'm trying to keep it going down. You're just gonna have to keep working it down. Yeah, this is annoying me how I can't get this to stay in one spot. I'm almost gonna have to be like this. This is gonna be hard for you to shoot. Keep stretching it as you go. You can even use a heat gun when you're done if you need to have any wrinkles. Actually, when Kenny is done here, there are very few wrinkles when he pulls everything down nice and tight. However, we're still going to use a steamer rather than a heat gun because a steamer typically doesn't uh, cause as much damage to the uh, vinyl fabric if you're not careful. You can always use a heat gun, but you must be careful not to damage the vinyl fabric. Just folding the stuff under here. That'll be shown in a future chapter. Now, I'm just kind of pushing that stuff into the Velcro here. Make sure that that's kind of secure there. I'm pushing that under. Ooh, that's gonna look nice. <laughs> so now your next phase is going to be attaching this wire to this wire. Okay, so now we're on the last parts of this. So you're, you're, what you're trying to achieve is going through this pocket and this bar. You're going to go through here, but you're also going to be pulling this to this. They're going to go through this hole right here, right here, and there's holes all the way across, so that's what you're aiming for. But you're going to do two parts at once, but you don't necessarily have to do that that way. You can actually put two pig rings in, in one hole, and we may end up doing that. It depends on how uh, much of a pain it is for me to try to do two at once. We're going to do this side first and do it. We're going to hook to this first from this side, and then we're gonna do the bottom part to this side, only in the middle, and then hopefully for the rest of them, I can just use one pig ring for both of them. So to start, we'll do just one at a time. So make your hole, and make sure that you're on the right side of your wire, so that you're gonna be able to hog ring it to it. Okay, so you're going to have to search that hole out. And I'm in there. Okay. Okay, so you have some hardware here that needs to be stuck out. So cut towards kind of the top part of the hardware being 
mega careful so that you're only putting so big of a hole or you'll be once again angry at yourself. Gonna make a hole on the correct side or a mark on the correct side of the cording there and we'll punch our hole in so this is also once again going to probably be a wrestling match. You're probably going to want to put another hole here. I'm just making sure that I'm through the hole in the metal too. Make sure you don't push the awl all the way through the foam and through the front part of your cover. I've also seen that happen, not to me, but to somebody else on YouTube. All right, start from your fabric and then you gotta try to find the hole. So now before I do these other ones, I think I'm gonna go ahead and mark spots here and where the holes are supposed to be and go ahead and hole punch my pole. Okay, so now I'm gonna just start attaching where I made those holes, but I think first I should probably use the awl. Just like I did it the last time. And I'm just finding the holes and making sure I'm on the right side of the wire. Okay, and after you got your pig rings on, the last thing you're doing is just sticking your Velcro. Okay, and that's that. Besides, maybe we might hit it with a, with a heat gun. To work out wrinkles, you can use a heat gun, but you can damage the vinyl if you use that. But if you use a steamer, it's a little bit safer. There are not very many wrinkles in this chair, so this probably is a step we don't have to take, but we still wanted to demonstrate how to use a steamer to work out any vinyl wrinkles. A steamer like this can also be used on the polyurethane foam. We did not use it here because our foam was not compressed to the point where we needed to use it. But if you had a cover on for many, many years and around the edges, if it were compressed or depressed in, a steamer can plump it back up. Usually what I would do is heat it up and then you can start kind of rubbing it. And it'll stretch to however the stitch is pulling it. But I don't really think you're gonna 
Yeah, you can burn through it with, <laughs> with the heat gun. <laughs> you definitely can. Actually, I think maybe it might be. You want a towel? Yeah, let me see a towel. It may actually be doing it a little bit. getting malleable. I guess it is kind of. It is kind of getting rid of the wrinkles there. I think there was much of an issue there. That's something that I mean, these are great for even too. If like you leave something sit on a vinyl for a long time and it makes like a divot in it, if you like hit it with a the heat gun or the steamer and then start massaging it, it'll actually come out. So. Okay, I am Kenny with Sims Upholstery and this is the, your front seat completed. The only thing that's missing is back here. There's a back trim piece that goes back here. Here's the finished result of our bucket seat. Stay tuned for the entire materials list and the tools that we used to make this bucket seat. The Sarag carries a large selection of vinyl seating fabrics and also faux leathers that will work great for car upholstery projects like this. Check them out at the Sarite website. Sarite would like to thank Kenny from Sims Upholstery for helping show us how to upholster this bucket seat. The majority of the materials and tools that we used in this video are available at Sayerite. Here's a list of the materials that we used and the tools that we used. If you have questions, give us a call at Sayerite. We're glad to help. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayerite website or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel. Be sure to click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. These are some other related videos that may be of interest to you. Click on them if you'd like to see them. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.